Costa, I've uh, been in Big Bear forever. Since 1969. 1969. 1969. And uh, before we get into what's going on right now, how about a quick update uh, for the folks that didn't catch the last show, and I know a lot of shows, a lot of folks did watch, uh, and Gloria posted this on Facebook, so I know we got a lot of folks watching online today. Uh, give us a quick update of what's been going on over on the North Shore. Well, as a lot of people know, it's completely moved off. And uh, we went into bankruptcy court to get protection from the county seizing the equipment, and the bankruptcy court granted <coughs> granted granted the uh, Chapter 11, which is reorganization, and that Chapter 11 stopped the county from selling the equipment. That's all they were allowed to do was let's, sell the equipment. Let's back up a little yep. bit, and what what started that process with the county seizing the equipment? Uh, the lawyers for the county that have been after me for 19 years now, and it's kind of a bizarre long story. We probably don't have enough time in the day. But <laughs> the mis <cliff> note. <laughs> they, misdirected, they misdirected the state court. And when the judge asked the lawyers from the county, what can Mr. Acosta do on his property? And they said under oath, absolutely nothing without a conditional use permit. Now, you, you, you brought that permit with you today? I actually brought the county code section. Okay. And in 2007, this was updated again, Chapter 8206, which is Industrial and Special Purpose Land Use Districts, mm -hmm. says what you can do on zoned piece of properties. And everything I do, an exception of concrete crushing, is in here without a permit required. Without it's a permit required. Without a conditional use permit. It's actually okay. permitted. Mm -hmm. And anybody can read it online, Section 82.06. And they stood up there and told the state court judge that I could not do absolutely anything on the property. And that's when he ruled down there that I had to leave. Well, I had nowhere to go. Well, what, what is that property zone? In? Industrial Commercial 1. It's the highest zoning in the San Bernardino Mountains. It's a minimum requirement of five acres. There mm -hmm. are no other properties in Big Bear zoned IC1. And the properties that are zoned IR are required to be 40 acres. That would be mm -hmm. like a rock quarry or a big, right. big plant. There's no 40-acre parcels in Big Bear that are industrial. But uh, that uh, requirement, it's, 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 it's plain black and white in this six-page document or 12-page document. And I just saw every one of them that mm -hmm. cover him. And, and he read it. They're Everything exactly we do perfect. is exactly in here, and it exactly says what I'm allowed to do. Mm. So yep. basically, if you were to eliminate the rock crushing, the concrete crushing, that which you say is marginal. Marginal, and what they're saying is, is that the special use permit's required. Well, if you read the guidelines for a special use permit, that's a one-time event. Mm -hmm. So that's what, we take years in Big Bear to collect concrete, and then we crush it once a year, mm -hmm. and then we sell the product. That's why the piles get so big, and then they change. Right. And uh, to get a conditional use permit on that would have been no big deal, except the county lawyers had put a block on the computer with my parcel number. So anytime we attempted to get a permit or tried, they would say, do not talk to anybody on this property. Do not do anything without talking to county council. It's a personal vendetta mm -hmm. with the county council attorney. Kind of got blackballed, huh? Um, <laughs> he's not yeah. being checked. There are no balances to follow him. He spent millions of dollars of taxpayers' money trying to prosecute me. And now the federal district court said, no. He's back in business, but the twist was she ordered us to get off the property within 20 days. Now, when you say that the federal court told the county no, told they the actually county no to what? That they cannot sell the equipment. Okay, because they had seized the yard. They seized the equipment, they seized which the equipment. was which was taking the yard, but uh -huh. they don't own the yard. I still own the yard outright. Okay. So and this now, happened, this was a couple of months ago when you were on the show last. Yeah, January right. 24th, mm -hmm. they seized the yard. Right. And February 28th, we went in for bankruptcy protection. Now, that's a key word, too. Remember, bankruptcy protection. Right. There's two kinds of bankruptcies. There's selling out, paying your debts, mm -hmm. or reorganizing, like American Airlines, right. Right. and operating the business. Well, okay, so you got in trouble, and now we need to help you. Well, we didn't get in trouble. The trouble came to us. 
Right. And it got to a point to where there was no way to convince the state court. One of my attorneys stated to the judge at the state court, at the end of the case, Your Honor, I would like you to explain something to me, and it's on the record. And he says, what's that? He said, I'd like to know how you can disregard 47 precedents of law. In this case, saying what you're doing is incorrect. The judge's reply was, I can do what I want. That's incorrect. Mm. Judges are held on a much higher standard when mm -hmm. there's no jury trial. So that's all into the appeal. But the appeal was running behind. And the writ of supersedious, which stops anything, was not granted. So the only relief was filing federal bankruptcy. Okay. When it got in front of a federal bankruptcy judge, who's nothing but integrity, nothing but values, and nothing but law and morals, she basically said, I will follow Section 543B, and you're granted. And that 543B basically says everybody that's involved, creditors, meaning banks, meaning anybody, like if a bank repossessed your car, right. they have to give you back your car. If they repossessed your boat, they have to give you back your boat. If they repossessed your tractor, they have to give you back that tractor mm -hmm. under Chapter 11 reorganization. Well, in this case, we have no debtors. Because basically a reorganization is an opportunity to dig yourself out of the hole. E exactly. What yeah. it does, it stops and it gives you the breathing room that you need to go forward. And in this case, we had one creditor out of that whole company. Mm -hmm. We have one creditor, and that creditor is the county. And they slapped a fine against us for $721,000. That's of, substantial. Of substantial. And it's yes. uh, to not only that, it's a violation of the constitutional law of the state of California. My appellant attorney had pointed that out. Mm -hmm. Because they gave me an ongoing fine. So an actual individual, like if you got caught speeding in Big Bear Boulevard and the ticket was $300, right. you would get a $300 ticket every day for 400 days. That's what they did to us. They gave us a fine. For over 400 days, or it's like 630 days, so much a day times that. That's how they came up with the 721. Was that because you didn't you didn't address the fine early they, enough? They or, make or? up no, they make up this fine situation. Uh -huh. See, well, you were operating illegally from 2008 forward, which is incorrect, because if you want to get really technical, we were operating since 1989. Well, they went back to 2008, which makes no sense, and went forward to 2012. Hmm. So that's where they came up with the fine, but that fine's really kind of a moot thing at this point because they have to explain to the bankruptcy court how they can charge me for something that's illegal. Okay, so see, that's where bankruptcy the... comes in and says, "What's your fine? Oh, it's a thousand dollars. How do you justify that? What's the code? What's the law section?" Mm -hmm. right. And then we would come in and say, "Well, that law is incorrect because state law trumps them," and that's how life works. I mean, right. we have God, the federal government, the state government the county government, and the city government. Mm -hmm. So whenever there's a precedent, the precedent's taller than another one, it trumps it. The precedent that saved our company is a United States Supreme Court mirror case, mm -hmm. which means it's identical to what happened to me. Hmm. And some man so this had this someplace else? in Ohio. Okay. And this man was determined to follow through with his civil rights not being violated. He went all the way to the United States Supreme Court. Mm. And when my lawyer pulled it out and read it to me, he changed his name, and it was my case. Mm. It's called a mirror case. And when the judge saw that, there was no argument. She says, I am not going to argue with a United States Supreme Court judgment. Sure. If it was a Big Bear court or a San Bernardino court, she could look down on it. She can't look down on something that's above her. Correct. Okay. So that's what saved the whole situation. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of law to protect people out there, but you have to be able to wiggle yourselves through all the books and find that case law. The county came in and found four or five case laws that were different that said, oh, no, we can do this. We can do this under a police action. They were putting me under a police action, saying that my yard was an absolute eyesore. Well, what about my neighbors? What about everybody else? That's not considered. Well, the judge said, but that's a state court ruling. Boom, they were gone mm -hmm. because the Supreme Court trumped it. Right. So it put us back. It cost us a lot of money to move. Materials scattered everywhere. Now, let, let's go into that. Time, time forward, yeah. <laughs> if you today. haven't been over on the North Shore, let's give you a quick look of what Andy's yard looks like today. I wish we had some before pictures. There's uh, That's our water tank symbol, and <laughs> that's, a, that's a sign of battle. People don't understand uh, in World War II, when the United States conquered an area like Normandy, what was the first thing they did? Does everybody know? 
put up a flag. They put up a flag. Right. It was a symbol of battle. Sometimes and then there were also, you know, we were talking about this a little bit earlier, these Kilroy was here. Maybe we can talk about that when we get through with these. Sure. But if you've ever been over on uh, the North Shore, right there, uh, just past Ransom's Yard and mm -hmm. statewide storage and, and all over in there by the airport, um, how many pieces of equipment used to be on this piece of land? I, there was Three a, days ago. There was about 125 pieces of equipment that that were operational. There were 16 pieces of equipment used for parts and or in the process of being rebuilt. Mm -hmm. And then there was uh, quite a few attachments for that equipment, mm -hmm. about 5,000 total items. Wow. Wow. And, and they're gone. Well, they're gone. And what happened was the big part that was a challenge for us was when the county took over the yard, as everybody knows, they set up an auction. Right. They took everything out. Well, the auction never and actually happened, though. The auction it? was stopped at 4 o'clock right. the night before with, okay. the bankruptcy. Right. with the bankruptcy. So it never right. happened. But there were already things gone. No. Well, that's the thing. They laid everything out. Uh-huh. Then somebody stole about a million dollars worth of the equipment in there. They stole all of the copper, all of the aluminum, uh -huh. all of the electric motors, all of the hydraulic motors, components, parts there, too. They took everything out of every truck, all the chains, the binders, the straps, the tarps, all the tools, every truck was stripped. But that was under under surveillance, wasn't it? It was under security guard. Security so guard. it was either the county receiver, guard at the, gate. the security guard, or the auction company themselves. Now mm. this is the part that really hurts me, is I had all my family heirlooms and all my personal artifacts in two 40-foot Sea containers. The containers. Mm -hmm. They were locked up. They opened those up, and then they compromised them. Mm. And one of the things that was stolen out of my box was my 1945 Lionel train set, which is a value of around six hundred thousand dollars. Because if anybody knows Lionel trains, how expensive they were in World War II, mm. because of the whole World War II issue. So right. I had about two hundred trains. They're gone. Bows and arrows, camping gear. Stoves, mm. cook stoves, fishing gear. They Any took, recourse, sir? Well, under state law, the receiver was required to inventory the yard. He never did. As mm. a matter of fact, he told the court, the state court, he didn't have enough time because it was too much. So that's another <laughs> battle. That cut to do that's anything? exactly right. So they went in and violated my civil rights under um, the 7th and the 14th Amendment mm. because they basically went in, and as you have stuff in your house, you got a drawer that has how many items in it? Oh, yeah. All of those items were I supposed to be... Drawers. inventory. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They were supposed to be inventory. Mm -hmm. This cell phone, these pair of glasses, literally under the law. They right. didn't do that. Well, we lost a lot of big items and a lot of, like, 16,500 pounds of copper wire. Mm. Do I that's, need to tell you how much that cost? That's a lot of copper. At scrap value, it's $2 a pound. Yeah. And we found the remnants outside the fence cut up. A lot of stuff was missing. I mean... The list goes on of the equipment that was missing, mm. but but see the battle. So the moral here is, if you're going to be locked up and your stuff's going to be held, uh, if you will, in hostage for by a security, you need to have your own security there as well to Question. watch yeah, their to security. Watch security. Okay, <laughs> this is the situation though. I wasn't allowed near the property. They kept calling the police on me and saying that I was this violent man that was going to kill them with snipers and guns and everything. Oh my goodness. We, so, we've got to go to commercial. I'm sorry. We'll be back in just a few minutes to learn a little bit about Kilroy. Kilroy. And also Kilroy where, was where here. You're, where you're at today and what your next step is. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Good Day Victor. Thanks for staying tuned. We're here with Andy Acosta this morning. Good morning. And John Wells. Oh, don't, shh, shh. I said too many Had times. To Dan Bathers. Um, we're both with Exit Realty, and we're talking about uh, one of the things we're really doing today. This is always kind of a real estate show. You know, land use rights. What rights do you have when you own a piece of property? How important is zoning? And where to go to battle these things? And you've been doing battle for a little while. Uh, a little while. Since 1991, I've been battling to maintain my private property rights under the Constitution. It's been tough. Yes. It's yes. been real tough. I spent a lot of money fighting, but you got rights, you got to stand up for them. Right. Yes. And before, before we get back to the, to the property and where you're going next and, and what, what might happen next over there on the North Shore, uh, I know you have... A tad of passion. Yes, just, uh, <laughs> just, just a little. About, about a lot of things. But you, 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 you're, we've been talking a little bit this morning about uh, something that may, 
most most of us youngsters <clears throat> wouldn't wouldn't know about, which is the Kilroy. Well, and and that's kind of your banner going into this. I'm a, Tell I'm us a, a little bit I, about Kilroy. I'm a World War II buff. I really like to understand World War II and why it happened and what it did. One of the biggest things in World War II, a lot of people don't know what it is, but you can look at Google Images and you'll find it. And it's called Kilroy. Kilroy was here. And Kilroy was here as a little man hanging up over a wall with his nose just over the, the nose wall, over, just his yes. fingers. Yeah. And it said Kilroy was here, and a lot of times it said up yours, baby. Yeah. And basically what it was, and I'll read this excerpt out of Google here, is that you basically, it's a plaque, and it says during World War II, there was a symbol for the American servicemen. Any place in the world where one of them went, he would see it. It was found on restrooms, trucks, tanks, ships, bombed out buildings, walls, and most any place it could be painted, pinned, scratched, or chalked. Even during an invasion of battle, someone would leave this symbol um, where those following would see it. It was a symbol of courage, pride, encouragement, and very definitely a morale booster. That is why it was chosen to represent all service personnel who served in World War II all around the world. This is a loving memorial embracing all who served during World War II years, 1940 to 45. And as you can see in the little picture. This is Arlington Memorial. Yes, this is yes. Arlington Memorial, and it's Kilroy was here, as you can yeah. see. <laughs> Our audience will have to go on Google because I can't do that. And Kilroy was going to be printed up on that water tower with the American flag, but it just, we ran out of time that night. <laughs> So it, it'll probably appear on that tower there, and uh, well, I gotta tell you, driving by, that's that's it's very symbolic. Well, it, in, it a looks, in a it looks like a battle. In, in a battle, in in a, in a World War II, in a battle, if you remember, every time they conquered Normandy or you know uh, anywhere, Jima, the first Jima, thing flag up. the flag went up. Yeah. Right. Now, a lot of people told me, why didn't I put it in upside down? Oh, well, that's now, you know what upside down means? Yes, it does. It means distressed. Mm -hmm. I'm not distressed. Right. Okay? I won the battle. I haven't won the war, but I'm not distressed. And right. and that's why the flag's standing the way it's standing. And uh, it, it this is a big thing for private property rights because if they successfully wipe us out, who's next? You? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The next door neighbors? The guy down well, the street? There's, there's already... Uh, has been this last year that you know the San Bernardino County um, uh, oh I just blanked on it where they're taking houses eminent domain eminent domain they, and it's not exactly eminent kosher. domain the right. way it was written. <laughs> and that's, and there's that's, a lot of this going on exactly. all over the country right and now. that's one thing they never did for me they never did eminent domain they never took the property they took the equipment mm -hmm. they took the tools that we use to make money and serve the people of this valley plus other areas and keep the crews and their families employed. Mm -hmm. They put us out of business since Cripple. January, cripple us. Yes. From January 24th all the way down, we couldn't bid a job or do jobs, mm -hmm. period. Because the only thing we had out of the yard was two trucks. Mm -hmm. We couldn't deliver firewood. We had to get another truck to deliver firewood. We couldn't do a lot of things. And it, it, it made things hard, but you get tests in your life a lot. You have to drive through those tests because yeah. anybody that sits in a corner with a blanket pretty much gave up. So what's yes. your future looking like? Where are you headed now? What are you doing now? Well, I'm looking at a lot of different things. I'm looking at uh, moving out of state. There's a like business for sale in Colorado mm -hmm. that I would probably enjoy to do. Um, I'm looking permanently, looking temporarily for another yard in the city of either Victorville or Highland. They're hard to find right now and they're sure. very expensive. Um, because San Bernardino be County, right. that's the key thing. <laughs> yeah. You've yes. got to find a piece of zoned property, yes. and then you have to find what the requirements are. And like in the city of Highland or the city of Victorville or the city of Hesperia, they actually have a list of things you're allowed to do, mm -hmm. ten times the size of the county's list, mm -hmm. but it is a list. Right. And as long as you're within that realm, you can go do it, not a problem. But a lot of our business is down the hill. We do make our bread down the hill and our butter is in Big Bear but the servicing for the community when the roads are closed when when there's dis disasters and big things the big we, snowfall we jump in and get it done to make sure that the tourists come to Big Bear and patronize our vendors in Big Bear because this town regardless of what some people want to think is totally tourist dependent sure totally if it wasn't for the ski area we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the lake we wouldn't be here 
Because if you want to see what Big Bear's like without tourism, go to Idlewild. Mm. If anybody's ever been to Idlewild, there's mm -hmm. nothing there but houses, and there's not that many. Right. And there's no commerce, very, very little commerce there. So it's important as a as a citizen of this town to step up when you got the right equipment. And we've geared this place for the right equipment when the big snows come, as you know. We've opened the road 19 times now since I've been doing business in 1980. Because when you get overwhelmed, the state, the county, the city, they all need help. Mm -hmm. And when you're part of the community, you do what? You jump in and go. Right. And uh, So paying for all these attorneys and all this support and moving and doing all these things has probably pretty much financially crippled you. To it's financially. Really try to make a move somewhere else. So it, it's very it's tough. It's a roadblock for you. It's very <laughs> tough, but, you know, God has provided everything. This has been his battle now for over a year because I kind of just standing on the sidelines. Okay, what's my next move? Yeah. There's <laughs> nothing I can do at this point. I mean, I am up against Goliath right now. I'm little David sitting in a field with a rock. And I'm not saying that I'm going to beat them to be gloating. Sure. I'm saying to survive. Th these are our rights to survive as human beings. We're allowed to work. And the people saying, well, you're so ugly over there in the North Shore. The, the ironic thing about this in 1989 is the county planning director is the one told me that's the piece of property you have to buy. Mm hmm it was the only piece of property, and as you both know, there's several the, people the, on that same side doing mm -hmm. the like businesses the that have never the, been the, prosecuted or even questioned. Even the, even the uh, exchange plants over there now. Everything. Yeah. yeah. Everything, and the thing is, it just it keeps going around town, and and everybody says, well, you know, you just made everybody mad. I made everybody mad for doing what? For doing what people in the community needed, the services. I mean, we. We're responsible for expanding Snow Summit, expanding all of Bear Mountain, putting the water lines in, going up to the lake to mm -hmm. put water in. I've done all that. I've cleared trees for over mm -hmm. 14,000 houses. And even so, the zoo now is going to need some, some the fill. The next and biggest job, the biggest job coming to Big Bear is the Big Bear Zoo, which we definitely must relocate because they don't own the land. Right. And the people that own the land changed the rent to like a thousand times what mm -hmm. it was because they had a long-term lease. Right. So they need 35,000 cubic yards of dirt, which 35, is 35,000. How many trucks is that? Oh, boy. Come on, it's, quick, uh, quick. 14, <laughs> 35. I think it's going to be around nine to 10,000 loads. Nine to 10,000 wow. loads of wow. fill. <laughs> yeah, it's about in the little trucks, yeah. You, you, the piles you have over there don't look that big. You know, the yard on the east side is about 30 feet deep. And mm. the main, the west side was where we parked the equipment. Right. There was some equipment parked on the east mm -hmm. side, especially mm -hmm. during the auction. They moved everything right. back over there. Uh -huh. But there's a concrete pile in the middle that would be crushed. Mm -hmm. And we could actually mix that concrete in with the dirt and utilize the dirt. That'll so put, EPA is okay with that? Oh, yeah. And the thing is, yeah, as long as there's no asphalt, that'll mm -hmm. be all sorted out. But that's another thing. There was allegations that we're like this big hazardous nightmare. Mm. The property is very, very clean. You see, I don't live like a rat. I don't do it in my own nest. <laughs> and we're very Thanks clean. That up, we're Andy. very, very clean. <laughs> yes. When it comes to oil. Mm -hmm. And the west end of the yard was on asphalt, about 18 inches of asphalt. So if the trucks would drip oil, they cling to the asphalt. That's mm -hmm. state law. And I had to do that about three years ago because the county notified the state that it was an operating yard. So they came in and said, this is what we want, and as you are aware, we put a big pipe up. Remember the big mm -hmm. pipe that went through to the right. airport? That mm -hmm. pipe was to keep the water off the property. Right. Because the water kept coming across the street, over the property, mm -hmm. grab everything in the property, and push it into the lake. Right. So now the water goes under the property, through that 72-inch pipe, and then anything on top seeps into my property, and any hazardous waste that projected would be on my land. Well, with the asphalt there, as we all know, Asphalt is made out of oil, so putting oil in asphalt is not a bad thing because it it'll doesn't absorb, it'll it absorb just, it. Sucks it it absorbs right. it yeah. exactly. That's the breakdown of asphalt. Mm -hmm. As the oil goes away, the surface comes right. apart. That's why the they yeah. that's why they keep repaving the highways. Mm -hmm. Okay, well the same thing with my yard. So it's it's got a very good clean bill, and I'm trying to get an agency in there to do a test on it mm -hmm. and uh, verify because the allegations to the court were that it's this big environmental nightmare. And believe me, there's worse places in Big Bear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, 
plans are right now is to just kind of keep going out of the office across from the Sizzler, um, finish up moving. We still got some equipment that's kind of scattered on lots next door. We got to move right. big equipment that we can't get permits for right away. Mm -hmm. Takes about two to three weeks to get a permit now, and um, so we're going to move concentrate on moving that. And then, uh, do you feel like you were maybe? the biggest offender for the county that they wanted to come after you so that once that domino fell that they could move down the line or do you feel like you're just being the one picked on oh I'm definitely being singled out and picked on by one person and they're they keep doing things wrong they keep backing up in their face but it's costing us money to fight mm -hmm. it it doesn't sure. cost them any they're spending your tax dollars what do you think about that Okay, that's well, another show. That's another <laughs> there's show. an election coming up, so we'll... Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. there's only one way you can fight that, and that's with elections. So we'll, well, and that's, we'll that's what we have to do. But if we don't, as people, if we don't stand up for our rights, big government, it's not going to help us. That's why we're giving you this opportunity. Right, they're not going to yeah. help us. I mean, it's no difference whether you're living in your house or or whether you're running a business. If somebody takes away your private property rights, what do you have? What do you have? Do if process, everybody in this it. world would go back to reading the Constitution and see what our forefathers wrote to yeah. protect us, yeah. who are they protecting us from? The government. Sure. Okay, yeah. here we are. We're making a circle now. Mm -hmm. And they're coming up behind us. What's going to end up on my property? A big, big hangar for jet service for a casino? What's going to end up there? I have the only piece of property see, see. that's available. I wonder who we're talking about. That's a big one. But we're the only piece of property that attaches yeah. to the runway that's yeah. still available. Oh. Yeah. We got to go. We're wrapping it up here. Uh, tell your friends. Uh, have them tune in. The show will rebroadcast it when it does. We got to go. Bye. <laughs> He's sitting there going. I know. <laughs>